Insulating our buildings is not just a choice, it's a necessity. Yet when we dive into the practicalities, a world of complexities unfolds with lambda values, R values and U values at its core. And understanding these three key values is crucial for anyone involved in the building design, construction or renovation as they directly impact a building's energy efficiency and comfort. My name is Anton Dobrski, I'm a Passive House trainer and I've taught hundreds of professionals how to design energy efficient and comfortable buildings. And in this video, I'm going to share with you what the differences between these three values are and how to decide which value to use in various scenarios. So let's start by exploring what each of these terms means and why they're so important. Well, first up are lambda values, sometimes referred to as K value or lambda value. They're measured in watts per meter Kelvin and lambda values tell us how well a material conducts heat. Or in other words, the lambda measures how much heat or watts is lost per insulation thickness of the material measured in meters per temperature difference between inside and outside measured in Kelvin. And the principle here is straightforward. Much like in GOLF, the lower the number, the better the score, or the lower the lambda value, the less heat is lost through the material and the better its insulating properties are. And this is crucial when selecting materials for building insulation, as effective materials are those that minimize the heat flow. And that's important because heat flow is vital for controlling energy efficiency. However, the thicker the insulation material is, the less heat is conducted through the material. And that's something we cannot define and measure with the lambda value because the lambda value is the same depending on the material no matter what the thickness is. And that's where the R value comes in handy. So the R value is a measure of thermal resistance which is how well a material resists the flow of heat through it. And this value is calculated by dividing the thickness of the insulating material measured in meters by its lambda value. And the result, given in square meters Kelvin per watt, tells us how effective the material is at insulating depending on the thickness and thermal conductivity. And the higher R value indicates better insulation, meaning the thermal resistance is higher, or in other words, it's more effective at reducing heat loss. R values are particularly important when we consider the thickness of the insulation. For example, two materials might have similar lambda values, but if one is thicker, it will have higher R value and therefore be a better insulator and this makes our values a handy tool for comparing different insulation materials and thicknesses in real world application but what is the u value and do we even need it well the u value is a comprehensive measure that sums up the reversed thermal resistances of all the layers that make up a building element this includes any adjustments for fixings or air gaps and is measured in watts per square meter Kelvin. And the U value indicates the ability of an element like a wall or a window to transmit heat from a warm space to a cold space. And the lower the U value, the better insulated the building element is. And U values are also especially important because they're the figures used to meet building regulations or standards, just like the passive house standard, because they give us a complete picture of how well an entire building element insulates. So now we've clarified that lambda values measure how well material conducts heat, R values measure the resistance to heat flow at a specific thickness, and U values measure the overall ability of a building element to transmit heat. But let's now dive deeper into the practical applications of lambda, R and U values, because understanding when and how to use these values is key to making informed decisions about insulation in building design and construction. So lambda values are essential when comparing insulation qualities of different materials. And let's look at an example of three different materials. Concrete has a lambda of around 2.3 watts per meter Kelvin. Timber has 0.13 watts per meter Kelvin and cellulose insulation has a lambda of around 0.04 watts per meter Kelvin. So we lose almost 60 times less heat through the cellulose insulation compared to the concrete and three times less heat compared to the timber. So this example clearly shows us how different materials can be compared with each other in terms of their insulating qualities. And this principle also applies when comparing different types of the same material, such as expanded polystyrene, for example, or also called EPS. There are various EPS products on the market, each with slightly different insulating properties. So by comparing their lambda values, we can determine which type of EPS offers better performance in terms of reducing heat transfer. 
For example, gray EPS contains graphite, and graphite brings additional thermal properties to EPS, making it more effective and offering a higher thermal performance than white EPS. So gray EPS having a lambda of around 0.032 watts per meter Kelvin can achieve around 20% better insulation properties than white EPS, which has a lambda of around 0.038 watts per meter Kelvin. However, suppliers very often focus on the R value. And when, for example, a 14 centimeter thick insulation is sold, its R value is a key selling point. But it doesn't make sense to purely compare R values without knowing the exact thickness of the material, because concrete can have the same R value as 10 centimeter cellulose insulation, but to achieve this, it has to be almost six meters thick. That's why R values are useful in two cases. Firstly, it allows us to compare the insulation effectiveness of different materials, but with the same thickness, where a higher R value indicates better insulation. And it's useful in cases where we have, for example, limited space available for the insulation, or in cases where we've already defined how thick the insulation should be. Secondly, if a specific R value, let's say eight square meter Kelvin per watt is targeted, different materials can be compared to achieve this efficiency. In this scenario, the variable is the insulation thickness, or in other words, the thickness of each material adjusts to meet the desired R value, offering flexibility in material choice and application. Unlike lambda or R values, U values account for the entire buildup of an insulating component and take the application of insulation metrics a step further by including elements like fixings and studs, which are thermal bridges that can increase heat losses. So, this makes U-values essential in evaluating the overall effectiveness of an insulation system, including the influences of external and internal heat transfer resistances, or in other words, the influences of the boundary conditions. For instance, a wall's U-value will vary if it faces the ambient air as opposed to the ground due to the different environmental interactions. And this comprehensive approach enables a more accurate assessment of a building's thermal performance. And compliance as well with energy efficiency standards. So that's why we are using the U values when making the energy modeling for buildings and evaluating their energy efficiency, just like we do with passive house projects. But remember that insulating a building is not enough. And this can lead to unintended consequences like high energy bills, moisture problems, and compromised air quality. So do not insulate a building until you watch this video.